This week on Cinema Beach, texting in theaters, mommy porn, and an Indonesian action film. Welcome to Cinema Beach, the show that brings you the latest news and reviews from the art house, courtesy CinemaBeach.com. I'm Brian Thompson. And I'm Tony Ortiz. And I'm Max Keller. Max uh, is joining us uh, from the website. Uh, thanks for, for being here, Max. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I think we got a good show uh, happening today. We're going to be talking about uh, The Raid, the new Indonesian uh, action, violent... Yeah, <laughs> Max is giving the thumbs I up. i got to so. give the thumbs up for The Raid. <laughs> All right. And uh, we're going to do our DVD pick of the week. Um, and uh, but first we've got the the indie news feed. All right. Well, last week uh, the Hollywood Reporter had a study going on about uh, seeing if people wanted to do some social networking while they're in the theater. Yeah, I mean, the, constantly being on their phones. <laughs> well, yeah, they are. They're always on. You're on your phone today in the in the movie theater. <laughs> hey, thanks for writing me out, dude. What's up with that? What? Um, you know the the uh, that was important. To to, to well, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing what you're watching. Yeah, and I had to check in what we were doing. <laughs> I think that was the point. The point of the study, and I, I think uh, a lot of people were talking about the study this week. Uh, the the point of the study was actually not because they wanted to see if people wanted to text in theaters, which I think is what got a lot of the, the buzz about the study. Uh, it was actually the the study was about social networking and and whether or not people are actually. Uh, using social networking to consume entertainment, or if it's a new form of entertainment. Yeah, but most people don't have a good podcast <laughs> like we do, and well, uh, that's why fair, I checked us in. I, I do, uh, I do post the podcast on our Facebook page, so, yeah, uh, so I hope that people are actually consuming our entertaining content while on Facebook. But uh, are you checking in? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting all these emails. Uh, getting text messages. Yeah, I'm getting text messages right now. Um, you know, it, so. Uh, I will say, if you read the whole study, um, there is something actually very important with the study, and that's it's actually people are using social networking. They're using Facebook. They're using Twitter as a form of entertainment now. It's not just about sharing your status. They're actually learning about films uh, through through Facebook. If you know a friend of theirs says, "Hey, this movie is really good. You should go see this movie," it's enticing them to maybe go see the movie. Yeah, and that's I think they could say that afterwards, though. I don't understand why you have to be in the theater. Having to do that at that moment. Agree. You're, like, as we'll talk about earlier today, uh, later, uh, about the raid. I was totally swept away and in that movie. I had no time. Uh, you are that, getting ahead on the in this in the that review texting, here, but <laughs> that texting. I would say that texting was before, like during the trailer. <laughs> Okay. Fair enough. Slightly this yes, right ever, ever when, so slightly better. Right when the movie started, uh, you know what I mean? I I was done. So So okay. But again, I don't I mean I think we're all in agreement here that, that texting in theaters is is bad. It's reprehensible. There's a yeah. special level of hell reserved for you people out yeah. there. Yeah. You know, they're they're talking about actually having um uh special seats in the theater that would not be so distracting so that you would have Tweeting seats, so... I mean, I guess if you take, like, the back two rows and you have that as your special reserved spots for tweeters and Facebookers and four squareers, if you if yeah. that's even a term, I mean, I, I guess if it's not distracting to the masses, then it's... It, I wouldn't have such a problem with it, but I... I'm sure you guys are the same way. I hate it when there's a guy in front of me and the bright screen just pops up. It is it is distracting. Um, I will say this, though. As distracting as it is, and, and while we're talking about relegating him to the back of the theater, a la Rosa Parks, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the, the weird thing is we were watching a movie this morning, and uh, we actually had an usher standing in the hallway, and he got a, uh, a call on his walkie-talkie, and it was just it was very loud, and he, and he basically said... Uh, Danny, are you there? And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I thought on? it was in the movie. I, uh, yeah. I was, like, Danny. I was like, who's Danny? I didn't really catch that. And uh, so, you know, I mean, there, there's, I think, some some level of, as, if you're going to a movie, if you're seeing a movie in a public place, you got to be expected to experience some no, some public nuisances. It's going to... Well, oh. No, you no, go, no, go, no, right go, go. All right, all right. I guess I'll go because he's letting me. Uh, no, here's the thing. At most movies, I, feel, I find that totally unacceptable. That's just me. 
the Usher should have their radio turned down or they should have an earpiece in. This is why I love going to places like the like Arclight. Because yep. you don't have to, or, you know, I've never been to the Alamo chain in Austin. But, I mean, you've seen their PSAs. They've got them online. It's no texting, no talking. They don't put up with that shit. Right. And that's the way to see a movie. You don't want those distractions. I, 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 I think guys, so. But, uh, put up with that shit. I mean, I, I just think, ultimately, I, I don't know if you can totally get away from it. And while you can say, yes, don't text, don't you know, talk, don't do that stuff in the theater, you know, if you're, if you're going to a movie theater, I, I guess what I'm saying is, it's gonna happen. We we saw a movie. Uh, you didn't come with me, but we I saw the wrestler, and uh, during the middle of the wrestler, a guy had a heart attack in the theater. And Is that I, why you didn't like the wrestler? Maybe that's why I didn't oh like the wrestler. I, I I've gone on record now before and saying why. I didn't like the wrestler. Oh. Yeah, I figured uh, it out. You know, a friend of ours, Pat, he actually said uh, that maybe my enjoyment of the movie was was spoiled because the guy had a heart attack during yeah. the movie. But uh, you know, <laughs> I liked it so much he had a heart attack. <laughs> I think it was during the scenes where yeah. he was getting beat up. But uh, uh, you know, uh, so I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, texting maybe is just one nuisance. Um, but you know, ultimately, you're seeing a movie with a bunch of other people. You can't really relegate what everybody else is true. doing. I don't, you know, I don't well, know. you can do the best that you can. But yeah, off. Well, you know, yeah, I, I guess uh, one thing that w I guess won't be tolerated if you're going to go see a movie is reading an ebook, and uh, yes. that's my nice little segue into uh, we're going to be talking segue. about. <laughs> no one's going to be texting in this movie, I promise you. <laughs> we're talking about uh, uh, E. L. James's uh, book that got bought this week. Um, it's Fifty Shades of Grey. It's uh, a wow. it being being called mommy porn and uh it's basically uh el james was a, a a television executive but she was uh, a writer she had written some twilight fan fiction on a website and she ended up actually adapting uh that story into kind of erotica a, a, a book about a, a woman named uh is an amanda Steele yeah, or so, something, something like that. that and she uh she meets uh, a guy, uh, his name is Gray, and he's uh, into s and and she kind of goes with him. And that's basically what the, the book's about. The kind of interesting thing about this is that a huge bidding war last week for the rights to this book um, to, be, to be made into a movie. And ultimately, it was bought by Focus uh, for $5 million. I mean, Max, is this a movie that pe are even people going to see? Is it going to make $5 million just from the book sale? Well, I'll, uh, you know what? That's a good question. I, I honestly don't know. I'm wondering... You know, you have an audience. There's a great quote that uh, that was in another podcast I was listening to this week, which is, men watch porn, women read porn. And the question is now, are those women who read this going to go into the theaters? Is it going to have a Hunger Games-esque opening? Absolutely not. But... Five million? I mean, I, I, I could see it potentially turning well, a problem. Yeah, and to credit that, that was Kim Masters on, on the business. And, and she actually did talk about that with uh, with The Hunger Games. And you had a book, The Hunger Games, which was a, definitely an R-rated book, but uh, was made into a PG-13 movie. I don't know, Tony, is this... This is... Yeah, but you can get that same effect. This is not going to be an R-rated going down to PG-13. This is going to be X going to NC-17 going down to R rating. It's just going to be too much. And is, I it, don't think, is it Blue I mean, Valentine? You it, know, is it, you know, I think it's probably I mean, more in line with like shame. Henry and June or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? This is all erotica. This is something that I could see why they wanted to buy it because it obviously can't stay on the bookshelves. It's like yeah. constantly on Amazon being like downloaded. It, it's huge, but I think as uh, Max said before and that, you know, quote, women read porn, I, I, I don't Well, and I think the success of the book, we were talking about this earlier uh, before we started the show. Um, the success of the book actually came from the fact that it was an ebook for the longest time. And so women were able to read the book without actually being outed they that they were reading. Yeah. Or, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I think that has going for it. Will those women then, will they buy the ticket? Will they be, you know, public and go see the movie? I don't know. The, one of the things I wanted to talk about with the film was that. Uh, I think one of the great things about this is that it was being bought by, it was, or the bidding was happening among all the major studios. And this is definitely a story, its subject matter is kind of more indie related. And I'm happy to see Focus bought it. But I'm also excited that somebody like Warner Brothers or somebody like Universal were interested in buying the story. So, Yeah, I mean, now that you have a mini major that has a big hit with a, with a, a piece of literature, you know, a novel adaptation, th everybody's going to want to find their next one. And while I'm definitely not comparing Hunger Games to Fifty Shades Grey, I mean, you know, it's a new trend. Everybody wants some sort of novel adaptation. Yeah, now. Yeah. But my my question is, can you think of any other films that even are remotely like Fifty Shades of Grey that have done any sort of business? The only thing that even remotely comes to my mind right now is Secretary with Maggie Gyllenhaal. Which was a comedy, and this is definitely yeah, not a comedy. Yeah, definitely so, not. Yeah. I, I agree. It, it is kind of a unique. That's why I maybe compare it to Shame. That's um, a fair. Yeah, yeah which fair. was an NC-17 and didn't it didn't make $5 million at the box office. So yeah. I don't know what Focus is going to do with this. I guess we'll have to wait and see.
But yeah. uh, um, one one final thing, uh, Max is with us here. Max is actually um, uh, new to the website. He actually is putting on our, our repertory theater calendar. So our calendar section has been revised. I don't know, Max, you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I live in Orange now. I'm a graduate student at Chapman, uh, but I lived in LA for a long time, and I'm a big fan of places like the New Bev and the Arrow and the Egyptian. I love the repertory theaters. And for years, I kept saying, when is somebody going to finally make a calendar that has all of the places on it for every day so I can, you know, it's easier to understand what's playing and I can make choices a little easier. And one morning I woke up and I went, there's nobody who's going to do this unless I do it. Yeah. So it's on the Cinema Beach website. You should all check it out. It lists every theater, every repertory theater in LA every day, what's playing, it has my picks for the big stuff, uh, the April calendar I'm working on, it should be done today and up on the website in the next day or two. Uh, there's some good stuff coming up this month. There's an interesting double feature that's being set up by the a AMIA student chapter at UCLA of T Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief and Hudson Hawk. Which interesting combination. is an interesting <laughs> double feature. Uh, there's a Witt Stillman double feature coming up at the New Bev April 20th and 21st. Great, Obviously, great. he's got Damsels in Distress coming out. So good time uh, with that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then the other thing I was looking at, I'm pulling up the Cinematheque here. Ah, yeah, this, uh, this upcoming Saturday, not tomorrow, but the week after, the Egyptian is showing the new restoration of Ben-Hur that was scanned at 8K resolution. Oh, very nice. It's going to have the original almost 2.7 to 1 aspect ratio. So there's always good stuff. Every day, there's something great playing. So check out the calendar. It Definitely, if you're in LA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, up next, we've got our review of uh, the Indonesian film The Raid. So stay tuned. For more film news, check out the indie news feed at cinemabeach.com. From trailers to casting announcements, film festival news to production updates, the news feed at Cinema Beach is your best source for indie film news. While you're there, subscribe to our RSS feed. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Dan jangan lupa bersenang-senang. Do you remember how you felt when you saw the Matrix lobby scene? Do you remember how you felt when you saw uh, the, the hallway scene in Old Boy? Or how about when you saw Bruce Lee attack Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? As great as you felt during those sequences, they don't compare to what you're going to see in the raid. Uh, Tony, we saw the raid together. Actually, we just now saw the raid together. Um, so we're, we're really fresh off of, uh, of viewing it. So we're, we're obviously very gung-ho. Tony, tell me, did you like the movie? <laughs> Well, that's, you know, it's funny is I know that all three of us here aren't going to say anything bad about this movie, or to some degree. Um, yes, I love this movie, and I think we're all in agreement. and as far as that, this was candy for, this was the chicken soup for my soul. <laughs> this put me in such a good mood. I turned the brain off, my face was in a constant smile, and my eyes were just totally glued to the screen. I was... You know, it was what a good action movie should be. I mean, it literally made me. I, 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 out of all the movies I saw, probably this year, this has been one of my guilty pleasures. Lucky, just fun, happy movie. Well, tell tell us what what is the movie about? I mean, kind of give us a recap of what happens here. Um. Well, simply enough, 
a bunch of guys go into a building and have to fight their way out. I mean, that's pretty much it. These police officers go, they don't know why they're going in to this building uh, of this uh, warlord, this gang warlord, and um, they know it's going to be a, a tough battle, but they go in and from minute one, they have to like fight their way through this whole building that's just, they're getting ambushed constantly. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bloodbath. It's, con I mean, I think we, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the trailer. And um, anyone who saw the trailer, that's just a little piece of what you're going to see in this movie. So, I don't know. So, well, I, I mean, I, well, we'll talk about how I felt about the movie. I, you know, I, I enjoyed it as well. I think I, we both kind of came out with, uh, with a big smile on our face. And I think that's kind of a, a nice endorsement of the movie. But, uh, Max, when I asked you if you saw the movie, you, I mean, you had like a bigger smile than I had, I think. So. I, I got a little giddy. You brought yeah, it up yeah. and the smile came out. And when you found out we were doing the raid today, you're like, oh my goodness. I was like, all right, I picked a good time to show up on this show. Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw it uh, Monday night at the Arclight in Hollywood, and it could not have been a better experience. You're sitting there, and it, it, it literally gets straight into it. You're into the action within the first, I'd say, five to ten minutes of the movie. And it's, I mean, it's an hour forty. But from that point on, the action doesn't stop for maybe more than two, two to five minutes at a time. It's amazing how yeah. much they pack into yeah. this movie. Uh, you know, I, and I think that's one of the, the, I think the credits to Gareth Evans, uh, who directed the movie. Um, he he paces it very well. It's a movie that you know, as as Tony was saying, it's uh, not totally uh, story driven. It's more action driven, and and he knows that, and he's making a movie for that reason, and. Uh, it, it does happen right away. You know, five minutes into the movie, we're we're at the at the house and we're fighting, and the 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 fighting is more of the martial arts style of fighting. You know, we we have the Muay Thai stuff going on, uh, and we have a, a lot of guns and a lot of action. So uh, it, it is. It's well paced. It is nonstop action, but there are some some nice breaks that actually end up letting us breathe a little bit. And yeah, because you couldn't just go for an hour no. and a half. You'd just be on the edge of your seat, and you'd have a <laughs> you'd have a heart attack like that yeah. guy in the screening of The Wrestler you, exactly. you, you saw. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those moments are really nice, and it kind of lets you have a little bit of the story, so it's not totally storyless. I mean, it, but the editing is so brilliant. It's so fluid. It moves so quickly. And the sound design is just... Oh, of I course, I want to know yeah. who the Foley guy is and give him a medal. <laughs> this is uh, daddy porn. This is what this <laughs> is. Daddy porn. You know what I mean? This yeah. is total ass-kicking. I want to go out there and I want to start fighting you. I want to just start fighting in the middle of the theater. Well, okay. So I, I think we, that might happen here because I will say this. Uh, while I enjoyed the movie, um, I... I did have a lot of problems. <laughs> He's going to bust out his knife here. I had some problems with it, and I think you had some problems with it too. But I, the problem is, and I, and I appreciate that you were able to turn off your brain. I wasn't. I, I had a problem with basically finding myself saying, oh, this isn't very realistic. I'm not really buying this. I don't really buy the, the ultimate, the, the opening premise that these guys would go in here. They kind of try to play with it a little bit. But even the action sequences, there are some elements where I was saying, eh, they're, they're, they're basing some of it in reality, and all of a sudden they, have, they, they do something that doesn't you know, have any basis in reality. And well, I mean, I'll give it. There are moments where the fight scenes have gone on so long, and you're just kind of like, how are these guys standing? How have they yeah, not, you know? you're saying, why aren't they in a concussion? You know? Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, you get to a point where it just kind of becomes the reality of this movie, and you just kind of go with it. And, and as I was telling you earlier, I think I like that version better than the American version of, like, when you see, like, Triple X or something like that, where they do some off-the-wall, like, jump off of a building or like Bruce Willis like jumping on a plane and like falling down like sliding down half a freeway that that just throws me off where these guys I mean I'm sure half of these guys went to the hospital at some point in time with broken bones or sprained muscles or something because the fight sequences in this thing were even though unbelievable the real guys were still doing these things, whether they had uh, ropes or something. I don't know. And I think uh, we, we both noted at the end of the movie during the credits, uh, there are there's probably two special effects credits and there's about 30 doctors credits of the film. So is there really? Yeah. I totally missed that at the end. I and should check that. There's there's a question. You know, there's there's scenes that happen in the movie where uh, the guy is. You know, he, he gets he gets legs swept or whatever. I'm not a fighter, so and and he falls and he you know breaks his back on the table and you're like. That guy just broke his back on the table. Like it's it's so realistic and it's so you know. So there are some elements that, that make you go, holy shit! Like yeah. this is amazing. But uh, again, I, I will I will say it's 
I had a hard time turning my brain off. So uh, that's no, I, I, I understand that. And I mean, this is the film studies person in me, because I've, I've, I'm just as much of a movie geek as you guys are, but at the same time, I have the formal training where you're supposed to look at the deeper meaning exactly, and the yeah. symbolism. There's none of that shit in this movie. No. It's just pure fun. Yeah. It's very low on plot, but you get so swept up in it that it's just... And as, as uh, Tony, you were saying, uh, it's, it's like somebody feeding you bacon, and they say, hey, here's some bacon. You know what it's going to taste like. It's bacon. It's fucking good because it's bacon. And that's what this is. This movie is, it's it's bacon candy. Yeah, yeah it is. It's bacon for the eyes. And uh, as once again, I mean, I think all three of us are going to say, you know, go see this movie. It's great that movies like this are made because really I, I think sometimes, you know, obviously this was an, I mean, is he's American or? He's uh Welsh or Welsh? Irish? He's, yeah, he's he's from somewhere in Europe. Yeah, he's European. I mean, this is better than any American action movie that I've seen in a long time, and I, you know, I think it goes to show that you know you're just gonna have to make it somewhere else, or yeah, it just it was awesome, fun, as we've said before. I mean, I don't know how many times you could say that in this podcast, but it really was. It's fun. It's a good action film. It's what action films probably should be most of the time. I mean, there you could mix it up a little bit, but. It was good for what it was. Well, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, go see the movie. And um, up next, we're going to do our DVD pick of the week, uh, Battle Royale. So stick tuned. To check out more about this movie, head on over to the review section at cinemabeach.com. Read the complete review, or check out the other reviews on the site. Updated weekly, we've got you covered on all the films playing in Southern California's art houses. You can also browse our archives for past reviews from all our contributors. So this little movie opened up last week called The Hunger Games, and uh, you probably saw it because everybody else did. But what you probably don't know is that back in 2000, there was an even better movie called Battle Royale that dealt with teens fighting to the death. Uh, a lot of people have actually said that uh, Suzanne Collins might have taken the idea from Battle Royale. Um, the great thing is Battle Royale is now out on Blu-ray in a special edition. Um, it is our DVD pick of the week. Uh, Tony, I know that you've seen Battle Royale because we talk about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially when, when we're I, in film school. Today, so. when I win my 540 million on the lottery, <laughs> I will be making my own little island, and uh, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> nice. I'm going to. That's pretty violent. Find pretty a bunch sick. of little kids to <laughs> battle to the death. So, I, yeah, let's talk about what the movie's about for those who haven't seen it, because oddly enough, a lot of, not a lot of people have seen this movie. It was a movie that came out about 12 years ago from Japan, um, and I think. I won't say for people who have seen The Hunger Games they should see this movie because I think there's a lot of teenagers that have seen The Hunger Games that maybe they shouldn't see this movie. Um, it is more, I think, of a, a nice tie-in for what we're talking about here with The Raid. Uh, it's a movie that deals with uh, basically a bunch of unruly teenagers who uh, get basically recruited by the state uh, to do 
a battle royale. Basically, they're put on an island and they're told to kill each other. And the idea is it takes place in, in a futuristic time when basically uh, the government's sick of the juvenile violence that's going on. And so this is a, a yearly thing that they do. And um, the kids don't know it's going to happen. And one of the nice things about the movie, uh, unlike the Hunger Games, is that it just it just happens. We yeah. see the kids, and uh, they're they're put on the island within the first five minutes, and their story is actually told through flashbacks. So we do see some of who they are based on their flashbacks, and it's it's a definitely a better better movie than the Hunger Games. Um, Max, I mean, I know you've seen it as well, uh, and you've also seen Hunger Games. So let's talk about that. Well, I mean, they're both really good movies, but I mean, they're while they have a very similar story. You know, Hunger Games had to be turn, toned down because it's an American movie. It's coming from a mini major, and it's the first. They're trying to build a franchise. Battle Royale is not trying to do any of those things, and it can really kind of get into how ex, it can be extremely graphic. Yeah, so that's what, what I'm gonna. Trying to do is you're trying to shock that's, us there. Uh, you know what? I I I think that's part of it. I think that it's partially about the horrifying violence of seeing kids slaughter each other. But I mean, it's obviously social commentary. I mean, it's along the same lines of something like a Clockwork Orange. I mean, they're they're both great films, and they both deal with kind of like this dystopian society. What are we gonna do when we have this problem? And it's kind of the extreme length that governments go to. Yeah. Um. It, it's a movie. I, we we talked about uh it being a Japanese import, and uh, it was definitely heralded by Quentin Tarantino, and he, he was a big fan of the movie. Um, it is an incredibly violent movie, and Tarantino does like his violence. Um, it was a big influence on what he did with uh, Kill Bill, and um, it's, uh, yeah, uh, Tony, what do, you, what do you think of the movie? I mean, kind of give us your take on it, so. Um, yeah, it's like Lord of the Flies, and The Raid, and um, all these movies, like, mashed into one. It's just... I think it's where, what I envision, what I want, because I didn't read the book, like Max, um, of The Hunger Games, I, I really feel like that's what I wanted to see in The Hunger Games. Like this one, you don't really, just like The Raid, you don't really get into the world of the future, like we don't really see anything else but where these kids are. Yeah. And it's really just about these kids and the scenario that they're put into and the violence that ensues based on that. Yeah. So it, it's really just stripped down to the bare bones and the social commentary that it is talking about is really just straight up there. Obviously a lot of violence is thrown into it, but I think that shock factor and that kind of wakens you up and you know, you could see it for multiple reasons. We've seen it a multiple amount of times and maybe so you get the social commentary in one, one of them you just get like, oh man, you got to see this scene. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's kind of a, uh, you know. And, and to go back to the, to tying it into the raid, I mean, the raid is definitely not doing anything about social commentary. This is a story that is about, you know, violence in teens and, and we're seeing, you know, our, our teens, first of all, are they capable of the violence that we see in the movie? And secondly, are they, uh, what, what is the impact that that violence will have on them? Um, my, but one of the things I love about the movie is, like The Raid, it actually, like I said, it just starts right away. Um, but it is an action movie. It's it's straight up action, and I think just like The Raid, you know, you know going into it that it's an action movie. So you can, as you're saying, I think, uh, enjoy enjoy it just based on an action movie. So yeah, I mean, it really is an onion that can be peeled back many ways. And there's actually, it's, and I think we talked about it, it is actually a trilogy. Yeah, right, Max? there's yeah. there's so, at least one sequel. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it is. I mean, the other ones kind of fall off. They're not as good as that initial one, but I really do suggest that everyone go see. I mean, you know, you, you could go check it out. I think we said, was it on? It's it's out on DVD and Blu-ray, and I believe that the Blu-ray actually comes with multiple, with one and two, doesn't it? Or is it just the first one? Uh, I, I don't know. I, you might be right. I um, don't remember. But one of the nice things is that it's also uh, streaming on iTunes, and it's not streaming on Netflix, but uh, so you can see it multiple ways. Uh, it's actually even playing over here at the Art Theater uh, next week, so uh, you can check it out there as well. So. Out on DVD this week, Angel's Crest, starring Thomas Decker, Mira Savino, and Jeremy Piven. This thriller about a missing boy tries to explain a small town's secrets through loss and forgiveness. We Bought a Zoo, Cameron Crowe gives us his latest sentimental story, this time with Matt Damon as a single father of two, who buys a zoo and hooks up with Scarlett Johansson. Kids and animals challenge Crow, but at least there's no Kevin James in this zoo film. And finally, Tyrannosaur. This award-winning Brit film from actor Patty Constantine deals with a violent drunk played by Peter Mullen and a good Christian girl who tries to save him from self-destruction. It's a raw and gritty directorial debut that will really shake you. 
Well, that's it for this episode of Cinema Beach. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you uh, like what you see here, uh, rate us on iTunes, and uh, you can follow us on, on Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, thanks to uh, Max for uh, coming out today. Thanks and, uh, a lot. Yeah, happy to have you. I'm, and happy to have you on the website now. And, I'm, uh, I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, uh, if you do like uh, Max's calendar, you can actually find contact information uh, at the bottom of the calendar to subscribe to his mailing list and, and uh, get his calendar in your mail. So. Um, I, sh I should mention that it's actually if you get it from me, not this. Go to the site. The <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm, 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 I got to pitch the website, but I am. Set, the other thing is you can get it as a PDF from me, and it's a fully interactive calendar. Uh, you can click on any of the movies, and it gives you the IMDb page or the event page. It's right. got a whole bunch of really, really cool shit that I spend way too much time we, doing. We appreciate it. Max is the man. <laughs> as, uh, this calendar shows. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you go to school. My my life is complete that I'm getting praise from you guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? You like you live like the Amish way, just constantly working, sun up, sun with down. Internet. Yeah, with yeah, internet. With internet and, and a computer somehow. Totally not the Amish way, but you know what I mean. The work ethic. Anyways, all right, well, I'm Tony and Ortiz. I'm Brian Thompson. And I'm Max Keller. Thanks for watching. <laughs>